And fortunately for us, you get to create yourself all the time anyway, don't you? So. And fortunately for us, you. Okay. Oh, Ooh, definitely turn that That was on. me, not you. <laughs> yep. Welcome you to live with Kate Martin and welcome Kate's fans and followers and friends and family. Thank you all so much for being here today. Um, this is a really good friend of mine that I've known for a long time and we don't get a chance to really chat often enough about these really powerful topics and I've always respected Kate in her field and she just, I really look up to her and we were having a beautiful conversation in my group just a couple of days ago and I said, hey, let's, you know, do the chat thing about a really important topic. And you were like, what? And I'm like, feminine empowerment, because right now it's so important. <laughs> um, and it just still feels like we're breaking through 4,000 years of patriarchy. So I just want to talk about that. I wanted to talk about um, women in the workplace and um, the capacity that we have to be empowered, to be clear voices, um, to speak with clarity and strength and to be um, confident in that, you know, um, and to not be afraid to be in these leadership roles in our complete clarity and confidence. Um, you know, what even is divine feminine in the spiritual realm? There's this cute little term that people use, but they don't really know what it means. So I wanted to talk about that as well, uh, because there's just so many uh, definitions for what that is. And I just wanted to make it clear um, to everyone, whether you meditate or whether you uh, follow New Age or not, um, just what is that? How do we tap into our feminine aspects? You know, and what does that mean? How do we tap into it powerfully without seeming or feeling weak or vulnerable or, you know, too emotional or passive? <laughs> uh, I'm just a big advocate of, of that. So I wanted to bring you on here today, Kate, and get your take from, you know, how you lead and guide women and how what are women saying right now in business like what do you feel that your challenges are um with keeping people confident in their in their business and in their leadership roles wow thanks Pamela. well i'm so glad that you brought up that it's four thousand years old because i was wondering how do we get rid of multiple generations of the way business has been done, which is so masculine. And to be honest, for generations, for generations, I've been masculine. I mean, for decades, I've been really masculine in business coming from fitness and health background and being busy, 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 being very sales and target driven. And it's not really until the last few years that I feel like a kid in the candy store with this spiritual stuff, but I'm very, very open to it. It's only the last few years that I've meditated. It's only the last few years that I was lucky enough to meet you as well and do a session with you. And that was one of the things that tipped me over the edge that I would be okay. So I, I'm really looking forward to this. And I want to ask you lots of questions about, you know, our nature versus our choice. Um, how do they get i i think acceptance is is key and i'm often saying this to my clients because i believe it to be true for myself and that is when you're doing something that lights you up and that you feel like you're born to do that's definitely the thing to focus on that we give meaning to all these other things and unfortunately we're trying to learn how to do business well i mean i had been for the last two decades in business, but for the last decade only, have been learning it just from men. Mm. Fortunately or unfortunately, it's just how it is, obviously, with this version of humanity. And I think that women do things, obviously, in a different way. But we often, we're more sensitive and we have to, I'm generalising, obviously, I'm generalising a lot today. We have to stop more because we get burnt out a little more we're often juggling 15 different things at once. I know I like to do 15 different projects at once. Can't keep my eye on one ball. I'd like to have 20 or at least five. Um, and we've been taught a lot of the ways that we do things, like you mentioned, being vulnerable, that it's not good. 
what is that label and that the way that we do things is not productive but I'm such an advocate that we can be feminine and relax and receive whatever that is and we can do less and we can still earn money there's many times I've been in mentoring groups with men and beat them in the sales competitions and floored them all and they don't know how it was done how can that possibly be she's too nice (laughs) but it, it happened in a good way so it's a very, very, very important conversation. Is there anywhere on the screen on YouTube do people, are people able to ask questions? Um, they are. Um, if you go over to my YouTube channel, you can see the questions when you just look in the chat. Um, Someone's also saying on Instagram, there's an echo. Maybe we should turn that off. Guys, if you're on Instagram, we're actually live on YouTube. Or maybe, have you got volume turned down? Yeah, I've got my volume turned down on, on my phone. Me too. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll repost this later if you want to get off it. It's annoying. <laughs> um, so something that you said to me really stood out about women in the workplace and the concept um, of being too nice because the reason why it stood out is because a friend of mine talks about this a good bit and she um, um, has a pretty powerful role in a corporation right now in her job. And um, there's not a lot of women there, you know, it's mainly men. And she, when she goes to her business meetings and things of that nature, and they're bouncing ideas around, um, there's a lot of things that aren't working in her company right now. But, you know, but she's not the CEO and she's not, um, She's got plenty of power in her role to be able to speak and and to be in a meeting, right? But then when she attempts to speak, um, even though her guidance and and her advice about projects and whatnot, you know what I'm saying, you're smiling, it's spot on. And um, it's just a new take on all the other ways that the project currently isn't working. Okay. And then she speaks up and offers some really logical, sound, basic, like great advice, right? Um, and then when she does, they're like, let's say her name is Kate. They're like, no, Kate, no. <laughs> um, has that ever happened to you? And do you know any clients who that ever ha- happens when the, the females speak up and even other females, it's not even just men, you know, it's, it's females patronizing each other. Mm. That bugs me <laughs> and I want to get your take on that like they they generally shoot her down and they're like no that won't work no just no mm-hmm. she doesn't even get to talk about it <laughs> well it rings of course I fortunately haven't had to deal with that scenario because if I did I immediately would leave and start my own business because mm-hmm. that's all I've done I've worked for myself since I was 19 because I can't stand that not because I can't stand the male patriarchy in business but purely because if I have a good idea I'll go do it if I don't need other people to (laughs) execute it for me but that's because it's my personality in terms of I think in the workplace that's like expecting obviously the narrative of mainstream media worst bad example but expecting the narrative of mainstream media to change okay, maybe there's a few more decades before things will start to change. I think it's very important that women get into roles of power, even though that feels like it's a very loaded word. Mm-hmm. I see that that's probably the only way to change it because I'm dealing with people who own their own business. Um, so if their spouse or a relative or somebody close to them doesn't necessarily believe in them, usually they've got the fortitude or gumption to say, okay, thank you, but I'm going to do it anyway <laughs> because we have to, because we work for ourselves. So it's a little a little different. I wouldn't be able to tolerate that. I also have a very small amount of tolerance for, that's okay, you, that's fine. You, you be you then, your company, your problem. <laughs> I guess it's the taking on the responsibility of how much, how much of that will be tolerated. Are we allowed to not? 
are we not allowed to stand up for ourselves? Um, but what if you're going to get fired? That many people have that question to me where they're like, look, this is my job and I'm in this job while I'm attempting to build my business, which is going to be my power zone. Um, and, and they just like legitimately feel that they can't, like mm. particularly um, single women, um, when, when that is their income stream while they're building their business in particular, there's um, this matter of, well, do I put up with it? And it's very denigrating, mm. it's a very difficult thing. And I just, I observe it a lot, it comes up a lot. Um, and then I think about that because, because I'm with you, I would just be like, mm. I'd quit straight up, rather, rather be homeless, but <laughs> you know, um, however, I also, I have kids, like I'm the only person with my income. So I, even though I say that, like, would I really, you know, <laughs> um, probably, yeah. probably not, probably I would, um, take a little bit of time, you know, interview, find another job or, you know, maybe that would be the time where it forces me to begin my own business a little bit more, you know, who knows what it would be. Maybe that would be the time for me to, to use that as an opportunity to perhaps talk to the male CEO and just be like, hey, what did you think about our last business meeting? <laughs> you know, person to person. <laughs> yes, go above, <laughs> actually. Go above. Actually, that's something I'm always trying to do on, for example, even if my partner, they have a lot of politics where he works for himself, but he's still reliant on another company. I'm like, just go above, just speak to this person. He doesn't ever wants to rock the boat because again, he's afraid he'll lose the contract. Right. Um, but a conversation is a conversation, right? And in, I mean, do we just like say, okay, in the empowered world, would we feel, even if we didn't feel confident, even if we were nervous, could it be possible to tap into some component of ourselves to, um, to just have a conversation. It's not even a, I don't know, we can call it what we will, but just a conversation. Hey, can I meet you for lunch sometime? And, you know, topics come up, not that they're ever meant to. <laughs> this gets to be, this could be a whole nother, whole nother live interview, couldn't it? And empowering yeah. women in the workplace to actually be able to feel safe to have the container of a conversation because mm -hmm. it doesn't not bring up for them, I mean, fear and scarcity, but that's also not just ours. Remember, that's however many generations are in 4,000 years of fear. Mm -hmm. So it's not just ours. Mm -hmm. I don't know when we are going to be enlightened and overcome that. I think it's just our thing to be doing. But I think the more, the other thing with women's brains, don't you notice, is that sometimes like we're very, we think about a lot of things and that can turn into a lot of worry and a lot of anxiety and a lot of meaning making out of something that's you get to choose whether you're giving your attention to that thing or not, I guess. I also think that when you really know what you don't want, then you know what you do want. So let it be a passion and a driver to do your other thing and ask good questions for people to help you because there's plenty of us out there that will help. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Um, we have a question from someone in chat for you in terms of um, your entrepreneurial skills and um, you've been an entrepreneur for a long time. So how um, this viewer wants to know how you actually gained the confidence to put your work out there in, in an authentic way that felt legitimately natural to who you are or did you, did you feel confident? put myself out there is are they able to define what you mean do you mean make a video because that's very scary um for example i use the example of making a video if they want to define what that means um one of the things to do is definitely don't tell everybody what you're doing until your foundation is firmly planted and you know that you do the thing and i think that one of the ways to for you to get to know that you do the thing is to do the thing, not to do the marketing, not to do the website, not to do the branding, not to do the consultations about how the plan's going to go for 12 months. But especially if it's in the space of a people thing, you won't know who the niche is that you're working with. I still haven't decided what I'm going to do when I grow up, really. Mm -hmm. But I'm okay to say that as well. But that's only just now. Honestly, this is two decades in. 
I really hate the word entrepreneur, by the way. Um, <laughs> what word would you use? No, I don't. I just am a business owner. I, it is that. It is that. But everybody, everybody thinks they are one when they own a business or that they are a CEO. To me, an entrepreneur is somebody that, I guess, yes, I make up lots of things and sell them, but feels like an entrepreneur is an inventor. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the definition of the word is. It's irrelevant. No, no, when I think of entrepreneur, it's a very masculine word. So it, it feels pushy. It feels mm-hmm. like I'm going to sell you something now and let me tell you mm-hmm. why you need it, you know. <laughs> mm. I don't know. I, pardon my um, pardon that description for anybody who feels offended by that. But that's just how I feel when I hear the word. I kind of get freaked out. So well-mannered. <laughs> You're so well. You are the worst well-mannered entrepreneur I know. <laughs> because I will sell it and I'm not going to apologize you either want to do it or you don't that's fine (laughs) um the way I started making videos honestly though it was I only made video content for my clients and Mm -hmm. having you know two decades in health and fitness massage nutrition all that stuff and I mean like hundreds of sessions a week in the gym not with just myself with contractors and multiple people in each session that kind of stuff that's how the numbers came Mm-hmm. but I would so by the Thursday there was you'd had the same conversation hundreds of times and then got a little bit annoying <laughs> because I also didn't have much tolerance because there were so many people going through my life in a week it was stressful but also fun and I think I'm addicted to that I'm wondering where it is now it's like where is everybody what's well, COVID <laughs> they're on the screen they're not really but they are it's weird um I made video I made content just for them so if you Uh, wondering how to put yourself out there you put yourself out there because you've decided that you're going to do the thing you don't have to publicly claim it until you feel like no one can knock you off your perch and the people that are closest to you tell them how you want to be supported if that means don't look at my stuff don't comment on my posts don't tell me that I'm looking at the wrong place and not looking at the black dot I'm making a camera thing and looking over here but if you create your stuff initially for your people that's very easy so even if you have a container, like a Facebook group is a great place to start that because you know who's in there. It's almost like your house. So you can start creating some content for them um, because I've always been an appointment person for a couple of decades as well, like yourself, actually. We say that we're going to go live at a certain time or we'll, I will say that I'm going to turn up the session or I'll say that I'm going to do the seminar. I've always done lots of face-to-face free seminars like every month for 20 years. Um, and I will lose face if I don't turn up. So, it, and I don't want to go the day before. I really don't want to go. I think every time I think, why don't I do this? Oh, really? Oh, my hair's not done good enough. Like, I just don't want to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do it anyway because it would be embarrassing to not show up. Sometimes there's two people. Sometimes there's none. Sometimes there's 100. So. And you just enjoy it and you don't worry about whether you're feeling confident enough to do that if you stay in your lane and you're with the seminar thing or with the video if you just teach on my person I know my personality so that's a key is get used to whatever it is that you like to do I like teaching it was very hard for me to go down the marketing avenue of just talk about pain points I'm like no but they have a problem I'm gonna help them (laughs) so I understand pain points. I understand people's problems of not having enough time, not having enough confidence to pull the trigger. There will be something in your life and there is no alternative for you to do but the thing. I love the, I might be sitting in a rocking chair when I'm 80 years old. Will I regret the thing? Will I not regret the thing? Um, And no, I haven't always put myself out there. I've always helped people though, whether it's helping them to be the CEO of their own health or now the CEO of their own life and business and taking over sometimes the level of income that their husband earns, even though they have to do it as a woman because they've got children and 500 other things, they have to do it in less than 10 hours a week. Love that. Um, But no, not all of them make videos, but they know what they do and I know what I do and that's help people. If I don't speak to humans for a few days, I don't feel like I know what I'm doing here. It's very disconnecting feeling. So I know that that's where I get my good feeling from and it's also helping others. So isn't that what we're here to do? Mm -hmm. It's not about us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you said, um, you know, we're we're running our businesses and we're we're being the CEO of our own lives and, you know, of our health and, and all of that, our experience. 
as women when when we go into all that and then there are all of these expectations that have been kind of bred through the generations and they come with us our mom did it our grandmother did it all of our cousins and friends and sisters and whatnot do it we are since the 1950s when women entered the workplace and prior to them when they started to vote it was like oh we can vote well great how can we be empowered now and it's great now we can work and 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 really create have a career um and all of this and and it was so exciting you know and um you know, I, I remember my my um, granny, not my grandma, I call them different things on each side of the family, but my granny was really excited to work and uh, her money was her money and no one was going to tell her otherwise, believe me. <laughs> and, if, you know, Papa wanted to come get it. She was like, you know, you have your job and you know that's your money and you know this is my money and that's it. And <laughs> I think I just channeled her for a minute with a Southern accent. <laughs> She's like, that's my money. <laughs> She was hilarious and um, and she loved her job and she, you know, it was just such a role model. But then she also was like, and to have to cook everything and to have to clean everything and to have to raise, you know, my two children alone. <laughs> now, even though you have a husband, like, you know, and back then it was like, <laughs> my grandparents were very poor on both sides so she they were also um growing and canning and cooking their own food from over an acre's worth of um about three acres worth of garden that they had it could have even been more um everything looks big when you're a kid i'll probably go back and visit next year and it'll be like some little yeah. patchwork quilt spot on the ground they'll be like this was your garden i'm like oh no 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 that's not what i remember that was a football field when i like we did that thing yeah. So, but you see where I'm, you see where I'm going. I mean, there's just generation after generation of why well, you do this and this and this and that. <laughs> this is what we're up against. How do you feel about well, the? Rules? I think that's what makes us tougher, and to be sexist, better in a way, <laughs> stronger in a way. It, it's really I understand what you mean about the time and the. I'll speak about stepping back into the 50s role because I've just moved in with my partner of nine years. Like we've lived separately for that long. And so I find myself fluffing around with the washing. I'm like, what am I doing? I've really taken on board the 1950s housewife a little bit. Probably not as much as what he expected. Oh, yeah, I've got my boundaries. I'm like, no, you clean that much better than me. You do it. It's like, it's really not expected. It's cute. Um, it, but the question in relation to like time and the roles, we can use it as it's I'm a victim of this thing or, okay, then the challenge is let me figure out how to get this thing to work in two minutes because that's the challenge. Um, and that's becoming a, a single mum as, as well a decade ago. That's what made me take the business seriously or think that I didn't know what I was doing. I needed to learn from all the boys it didn't matter anyway turns out um but there's just not enough there's not enough time and then when COVID hit and the whole world was homeschooling as well I thought okay I'm, I'm cranky about this but now instead of having 40 minutes or four hours maybe I have four minutes what can I do to move the needle in four minutes and be okay with it and learning what those critical things are there are plenty, by the way, it is sales and marketing. And if you have an issue with the word sales, and I know lots of people in the spiritual realm maybe do, maybe I'm judging, name it something else. It's really just helping people. That's all. So putting up a useful piece of content is a good idea for somebody. Going and helping one of your clients is going to make you feel better. Do that. Reaching out to people that you've helped in the past that you actually want to connect with because you thought of them when you were in the shower, not because they were on a contact list or a to-do list, which is the male way to do it, which is the yeah. way we always do it in gyms and they have to ring people from the back office. And whereas women just they're like, oh, yeah, but I was just thinking about Betty. So they'll just message Betty because they care. Allowing yourself to care, actually, that's the strength that women have that actually that. technically is sales and marketing anyways we're just caring caring i like that i like that word that you're using to describe that because um i use the word vulnerable but when i use it you know with my students and clients they're like Ooh, vulnerable 
it's scary, but when you use the word caring, it's about receptivity, which is everything um, that divine femininity is. And it just encapsulates receptivity, the, the capacity to be vulnerable, the capacity to care, because caring can feel vulnerable, you know? And I don't know a lot of people in this world um, who are genuinely caring and genuinely compassionate in a way that they can give caring and receive caring. And that's the nature of divine femininity that I love. And I would love to talk about how you see the potential of that going into, um, you know, not just our business women, but our non-binary business people and all of that, you know, our gay men, you know, anybody, whether you're a man or woman, or I don't identify with any particular sex or gender, um, everybody has a divine feminine and everybody has a divine masculine. This is not about your sexual preference, nor is it about your gender. This is about your levels of receptivity, vulnerability, and compassion or caring, as Kate so beautifully put it. For the divine masculine it's about uh, what kate really you really exemplify this your ability to be clear and succinct in your speech and act whenever you feel passionate about something and just go get what you want you know that's that that drive that motion but it needs something behind it it needs that receptivity that caring that humor that you, you when you laugh you just light up it's something i notice about you always when you laugh you just you just shine right that's what's behind that, right? So how can we exemplify the use of both of those things without being so afraid of caring and showing that we care? Um, it's, it's, it's interesting. And being able to care and, and make money and not putting, I think it's, it's the labels and the baskets and it, everything comes down to be yourself. Because by nature, if you're following Pamela full stop, all you do for a job is care and all you do for a hobby or side gig or passion or anything is care. And why is that bad? I think something that's not talked about probably enough is that everybody is different. This is why I don't follow too many other people and copy what they do, but it's just a boundary. When do I need to stop? How often do you listen in as to whether you need to stop? Like a, a few years ago, when I moved down here and was 100% online, then all of a sudden, then all of a sudden my body caught up with me. Then all of a sudden the injuries caught up that were probably actually always there, but I just had never listened. It was also, I'd been being very masculine for decades. <laughs> so now I'm coming full circle. I don't know how to do that. I'm definitely not perfect. I'm learning, as we discussed, like even before this, I'm learning how to be held by a masculine person still run my business but be feminine and be masculine at the same time I don't know I even get confused with that stuff but the savior is is pausing and listening in and I have this new skill and I watch Netflix mm, love it. <laughs> I never used to let myself watch television or stop but now I do and it's okay good good um and for simplification of terms of divine masculine and feminine in business, when you're honoring yourself, masculine is when you give, feminine is when you receive. That's all that it is. And when you are really exchanging and um, able to interchange all of that, you know, in, in such a wonderful way, um, it feels like flow. It just feels natural, like as natural as mine in your conversation the other night where we're like, hey, let's just have a chat about some things that are on our minds. And um, it's just really important. Because sometimes if we start thinking, oh, well, this is the masculine, do I have too much of it? This is the feminine, do I have too little? Then we start picking on only one part of ourselves and drawing it out and criticizing it and being like, you're too masculine, beat, beat, it, beat that down, you know, make yourself more passive. and. Um, maybe you should stop being so mouthy or being whatever. And no, that's great about um, putting yourself out there and being who you are. Uh, but people have inner critics in my field. And if they become too masculine or active, they, their inner voices will say, that's too much. And they'll beat themselves up their thought process. It's like they're like a little monkey jumping around just saying, tone that down and push this up and da 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 and da da da. 
I, speaking of criticism, I mean, people are often afraid to put themselves out there because they will receive that. I don't know if it's that I have a blind eye to it or I just don't see it or I don't get any. I very rarely get any, to be honest. Some of my closer friends, when I put myself out initially, says, yeah. what are you making a video for about the fact you ate ice cream? Just don't eat it. We know. Do you know what to do? Just don't eat it. I'm like, no, no, no. Because I sell myself online, I want people to, you know, understand where I'm coming from. And then when I meet them face to face or they go to sign up or something, it's like they've been watching you on television. So it really does actually just smooth out those transactions. It makes it easier to run your thing. But you, Pamela, I have not ever seen the amount of barrage sometimes. Are you happy to talk about that? And the beautiful way you handle it, I would, it's almost like anyone would think you were Paris Hilton. Like, why? And I don't know. Anyway, you're the epitome of if you want to look at how to handle criticism and have a um, have a still a nice conversation that comes from a good place. I don't know how you prepare yourself to even do that. I'd have to just kick them out of the group, maybe initially. <laughs> um, you should join Pamela's group on Facebook and have a look at some of the conversations in there. You did say at the beginning of the year or something you wanted to clean out the group, so I think it's cleaning. Itself. I did. I think I put forth an intention, and it just started to occur naturally. And I'm like, well, I, that person just left. That person just left. Um, whoops! We talked about veganism. We just lost ten more people. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we, we talk about catalyzing topics and I have no problem sharing research, sharing my experiences, sharing um, my teachings and because it's raw material and very authentic. Um, it, it's like other women in particular get seem to get very um, put off by that when I'm in my very empowered divine feminine nature. Um, so that's part of it, but yeah, you, you, I was laughing a little bit when you were saying you seem like you're the epitome of handling that gracefully, um, because I was thinking in my head, well, you're not behind the scenes when I'm crying into a pillow or running into a car to cry because <laughs> I, I am human. I'm so human. I'm like, I can't believe you just said that. That's, I am that way. Like I, I have to work more on my masculinity on that. So that's my practice. You know, that's my practice with the world. Um, just mm -hmm. honestly, whenever I'm in my own group and just spouting out my truth to the world and somebody goes, <laughs> you know, um, and just and just doesn't like it and just goes off on me, I just kind of go, oh, at first I respond, the graceful part of me, the higher self takes over, is channeled on through. And then when ego gets a chance to think about it, I'm like, mm. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Okay, what I particularly like is on YouTube, it's not people's real ID. So people say, not necessarily on your channel, but I've even watched, you know, mainstream media giving a report or something with all these weird, unusual animal characters and pictures of nature with no real name because it's a real different ID. But on social media, it's the person's name. So they're probably a little bit nicer on there. I think everyone's coming from their own victim oh, like and injury. Like Facebook group that's like you know allegedly my fans so when they do that I just kind of go what they what forgot they were in there <laughs> yeah why are you here in this group excuse me <laughs> so I I started to observe in that moment right before you and I had this conversation I started to observe about um the presence of feminine competition females competing each other and really unfairly and I don't believe that competition belongs um, because competition is not really a feminine word. It's more of your masculine word. Not So in, in the feminine realm, it's more like comparison would be the word. You can use a healthy compare. You know, if you're jealous of someone, you're basically comparing and that's okay. That's okay that you're comparing, but do it in a way that inspires you. You're like, oh, I see that, um, you know, okay, Kate, I'm gonna pick on you. You're, you're healthier and, and, and all of that you know, than me and in your, in your embodied form, you know, you're very thin and very beautiful. So I could look at that and I could get jealous, but if I did, you know, I could also say I'm inspired. Wow. This woman is so empowered and she really inspires me to exercise more. She really inspires me to tap into that component of me that I know has the capacity to be healthy and fit. And that's mm -hmm. what I do when I get jealous, which is rare. I will be inspired with that. 
you know, just really inspired by any form of jealousy. But what I'm observing in my communities is women going like this <laughs> at each other. And then you're mad when you go into the workplace and the men say, you're being really out of line in your emotions and, and you get mad about it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's a bit of a call out, not to you, but to anyone listening, where if, if you can't embody your emotions in a way that's powerful and clear, and if you're jealous of another woman, team up with her, learn from her, get the tricks, like figure out what makes her tick, become her friend. You know, why not? Do you know what? Actually, I'm glad you said that. I actually just feel like I'm here to make friends. Yeah. When you ask any of my friends that are close to me, they're like, oh my God, you just make friends when you go into the toilet. And, yeah. But that's how I've always treated my potential client. Everyone's a potential client. Everyone's a potential friend. I'm definitely the puppy dog over the cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to say to anyone that's scared of putting themselves out there, if they're in Pamela's group, you won't experience that. You won't. Maybe from the inner chatter yourself, but that doesn't happen usually. And no, they me, just me. not towards each other, just me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just for Pamela. I don't know. <laughs> she's sorting a lot of people out. She's obviously been it. She's able to do it. You were saying something that I know of. Oh, oh, about competition versus comparison. Was that it? Oh, I love the way. I mean, you're then my idol for me to say, well, when I feel jealous, I'm going to get to learn to do that because for myself, I just have to stay off topic like or not watch what that person's doing because mm -hmm. no matter what level you're at like six cents in the bank six figures it's irrelevant we all have somebody that will trigger us for whatever reason for me I have to not not pay attention and then I can resolve it by not digging too much actually just by choosing okay well I feel this that and the other and then tomorrow I'll fall to choose I'll choose to feel however and in the meantime I'll go help my people and then that gets me back into that's my flow mm -hmm. so the more time you can spend I think being in your flow um, the only transaction that needs to be done from a business sense if you work for yourself is make sure there are things out there not necessarily all your prices on your website or your social media or anything but that People know that they can hire you to do the thing. So you make a piece of content, might be writing, share a photo, whatever it is, and say, if you'd like to hire me, message me on here. It's a really hard sales tactic, that one. What was it? I love it. I'm I'm just, I'm, no, I'm kidding. It's not a hard sales tactic at all. It's mm -hmm. a call to action saying, I do this thing. If you'd like to work with me, send me a message. And then you can have a normal chit-chat conversation maybe even get that person on the phone which is also an enlightening part of business i know at your level you wouldn't do that because you have a larger crowd but for people that are starting out i think it's underestimated just having a conversation with that person and this is not to close them or overcome objections this is because you don't know if you can help them so have a conversation like a human being and forget that just because the screen's in front of you you feel like you don't know what you're doing not true it's like a conversation on the telephone and we all remember what those things are. Hmm. So, you know, this one where you dial, yeah. <laughs> um, do that anyway. And that's honestly, you can get to multiple six figures, just to go masculine with it for a second. You can get to multiple six figures just by doing that mm -hmm. and choosing who you work with. You don't necessarily have to work with everybody, but you won't know, especially if you let them click links and go into places and then you can get weird people, I guess. Yeah. Or you can decide not to attract them, which is obviously what you do. You call them in. Um, I don't know. Like, I attract less and less of that over time, but it's still, I mean, they sneak through with anybody. You know, it just comes through no matter what. So the even the concept of law of attraction being like, well, if I'm this way, then I will never attract a creeper, women. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. You will. You will attract creepers you will uh, for whatever that judgmental term looks like to you um it is what it is and, and it makes us feel um like sexual objects and it's not pretty and it's out there and sometimes you have so much light that it's sort of like you know when you turn on your porch light at night and moths come 
That's just it. Moths are going to come. It doesn't mean that you're not bright enough. You're so bright that they want that. And that's another component of law of attraction that not a lot of people talk about. They're like, well, you know, you need to fix your vibration and da, 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 da. I'm so done with that. It just, just blah. <laughs> Can you talk more about fixing for a moment? Yeah. Um, because every, even I was having a conversation with a client this week and she said, oh, yes, I know. I just need to get rid of this or get over that or overcome that or let go of whatever. No, actually. Yeah, well, like, are we, you are. Right. I mean, and are we um, sculptors? Do we need to dig in, you know? Are, are, are we like architects with, with, with tools, like pulling out things? And if you are, you better be looking for gems because that's what's in there. It's not crap that's in there. It's diamonds, you know? Um, it is. I mean, and, and it's what's in there is beautiful, but we don't need to be excavating all the time and thinking that we're going to pull out shit instead of shiny diamonds. <laughs> wow. That's a really good way to put it. Um, but if you're going to excavate, expect goodness. Expect that if you pull up something that's hard to feel, it's not because you need to fix it. It's not because you're ever broken to begin with. It's, it's because it's a diamond and it's rough and it needs a little bit of polishing so, so you can shine. That's it. That's all that it is and ever was. Um, so law of attraction in its misunderstanding uh, just really triggers me. I get all passionate about it. <laughs> Please keep going. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually, before we, as we were talking about like um, people going off on my Facebook group uh, on me, when I post something they don't like, I, um, I was, I was, I'll do a shout out to my friend, Miriam Hasna. She's an incredible mystery school teacher. I was um stalking her site today just randomly i pulled up instagram while i was trying to sign down with you and i saw something and i went ha, ha. so I, I brought it up um because it's so powerful and it's about allowing your social media space to be your sacred space you know if you're on twitter mute people they won't know <laughs> if they're bugging you just mute you never have to see them again do you know how many people on twitter i have muted i'm sorry twitter followers i love you but you know i'm tired of hearing about all the new world order and stuff i'm just done so i mute you because i just really want to focus on my frequency so i pulled up marion's page today it just kind of came up while i was um, trying to sign on with you and she wrote this about her sacred space and her her social media space to build her business she wrote in my space stop thinking you know everything and need to have an opinion on everything keep your well actuallys and bad faith arguments respectfully your follow isn't worth as much as you think it is if you don't agree with me or how i use my platform please cancel me but leave the petty control dramas manipulation tactics psychic games and energy grabs for someone who doesn't read and see energy if I'm not for you, I'm not for you. If I don't like your energy from jump, I'm blocking you straight like that. No questions asked. If you like this post, if, if you think this post seems out of character for me, it's only because you don't actually know me. <laughs> and right now, Anya and I are going to go copy that picture and put it in your group. <laughs> and it's not even, and before she said that, she was talking about her level of empathy and how, um, how we as empaths just sort of feel everything. And um, a lot of times when people post things, they don't stop to think who they're posting to, who they're posting to. What a, it, It's like you're telling people what to do about their lives when we didn't ask. So in order to be stepping into your divine feminine power, um, I'm going to give you just a little bit of a take on something that um, a dead yogi told me. <laughs> He said, I'm not here to give advice and I'm not here to receive it. So see how that feels with you when you feel like you're giving advice to someone, how much of their, your business, um, uh, how much of their business are you projecting your thoughts towards and how much diminishing are you doing of their mastery and power by doing so? I don't give advice unless someone directly asks me for advice and says, what would you do? Or unless I'm sharing from my own experience or just a teaching from what a master shared that you can take or leave that may or may not be about you, but it's not direct towards you because you are your own master. So for me to say, hey, Kate, you know, I know you said this about the washing machine. So I just want to tell you, it might be better, you know, if you um, just did laundry every now and then, Kate, I mean, what's it do? What's it going to hurt you? Your energy right now, right? Okay, I, mom. I, 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please don't eat me. <laughs> so that would be dinner. And my mom says that. Right, right. And does it, how does it make you feel when someone gives you advice about something um, that you really didn't even ask for? <laughs> um, it probably makes most people feel rather annoyed. Do, do you Actually, feel like they don't see your power, your own capacity to make your decisions? Yes, you feel it misunderstood, actually, on yeah. the next level, don't you? You feel they don't even understand me. Yeah. I mean, maybe people don't consciously think that because they are asking the question. I had a client send me a message last night, actually. She always knows. I'll say a version of the following, which was, yeah, but what do you think? Mm -hmm. Well, what, what would you do then? Hang on a second. If it doesn't feel wow, what? You don't feel wow. There's no words I can add. You don't have the feeling. Mm -hmm. Do something else. Right. Yeah. So it's this that your social media space is just like there. It's just like um, the space that you are incorporating in your day to day conversations and um, the way that you talk to your boss at work, the way you talk to your husband. So when you're on someone's social media page, that same amount of respect, you know towards each other is just so important like for in the spiritual industry this is really big so listen up <laughs> spiritual healers and teachers out there <laughs> i'm gonna try to say this without getting triggered <laughs> so when you come to me okay someone who has been in her industry for 21 and a half years and you say to me your spirit guides came to me like night and they told me that you're sick and that I need to send a blessing. That's very denigrating to my power, my mastery, my capacity to know exactly what my spirit guides are saying. Number one. Number two, when you come to me and say, my spirit guide said this about you and blah, blah, blah. And I, no, no, no. And I'm like, I just stop. The moment you say my spirit guys have a message to, for you or your spirit guys have a message for you, you just lost my attention. If you don't know me very well, the moment you message me and say, I'm sending you healing energy, you just lost my attention completely. And likely my respect for a little while as well, because you just denigrated me. You just took away my power to heal myself. And you don't even know if I want healing. You don't know what my contracts are. You don't know why I might be ill and what I'm doing and how I'm serving with that illness for myself and others. You just took away my power. You see what I mean? There's so many ways that we could take away each other's power without even being aware of it. By over helping or by telling instead of asking? Just doing it. You can ask and when you ask, it's always respectful, right? It's always respectful because we're not, I don't expect people to know if I need help or not, right? Or if I don't, I don't expect people to know that. I don't know that I, you know, they can't read my minds. Um, no, they're reading your spirit guides or do you have the capacity to ask? Yeah, you have to ask. You have to ask, you're, you're asking to be in someone's energy space. Blessings are personal, healing is personal, advice is personal, and we're not asking for it. I'm not asking for it. I'm not saying, hey, random Facebook member, who by the way, has never been in any of my classes, who I had a reading with seven years ago, um, you know, or however long it has been, because it's normally, it's not normally the people who know me best. <laughs> um, no, ask me first, you know, just, just sort of see how I feel about it. Don't energetically intertwine yourself with how I'm projecting in my life with that way, because it's a massive ass assumption. You're assuming I'm ill. You're assuming that I'm not, that I have no capacity, you know, to function in the way that I want to. Now, if I need your help, you can ask and I might say yes. I might even ask me without you asking, but the balance of masculine and feminine indicates that I should be open for receiving if you ask me and I'm ready. And that's an if. Okay, so I'm going to be open to receiving. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to go into it and I'm going to feel into it and say, okay, am I kidding myself here? Do I really need help here? Or, you know, am I afraid to receive that help because? I'm thinking of what I will have to do in return <laughs> and I'm too exhausted to do anything in return. There's so many reasons we say no to receiving help. And then there are some reasons that people don't even, even understand. And it's, it doesn't matter that they don't understand either. We just get to leave each other be. 
I can't imagine the number of people that would, uh, they can send it my way. If you want to send me some healings, that's cool. Nobody messages me and says that stuff. <laughs> Actually, it's funny. They often will ask advice, which I don't mind giving, but it's funny in the container where I've got clients and they're paying. I just realized then when you were saying that, I ask permission before I go into something. I'll say, can you mind if I, are you open to a bit of suggestion or coaching or some questions about that particular thing? And then they do, they get a chance to think about it actually in there already paying in there. Hmm. But I don't just, you're right, it's very important to stop and then also be receiving. Right. Right. And then we just get a moment to um, connect and be honest with ourselves and just ask, well, are we just being stubborn or perhaps we should say yes to receiving some help? You know, um, I remember there was a time when I was afraid to be receptive. I was afraid to receive help. So then I started overly receiving it. Like I had someone do my website for free. Disaster, by the way, it took eight and a half months, but I'm like, well, it's free and it's a gift and he's helping me. There's nothing I can do. I mean, God bless him. It was a great website, you know, but still it, it's, I, I, I was trying to stand up in my masculine at that time. My feminine was like overboard. I was able to receive anything without any masculine, <laughs> without any directive of knowing how to say, you know what, thank you, but no. I had no capacity to do that at that time, which felt horrible because then in my mind, my mind was like, why did you say yes again? Why? Why did you say yes again? <laughs> I think, do you know what you've just made me realize? It's very important that, you know, anyone like yourself and me as well, I don't share my own stories of failure enough because they just think, oh, we'll just pop on here and just share. No, it didn't happen like that at all. It's happened, you know, you get to a place of confidence only because you weren't or you get to a place of comfortableness in other people's space only because you weren't. You know, there's been a, you have to go through the trials and the tribulations and then if you still want to do the thing, great. If you don't, that's also okay as well. It doesn't mean anything, you know, in terms of success in the masculine space and your money, et cetera, most of of the people who achieve whatever you want to put on Forbes millionaire, whatever list have also been bankrupt multiple times and could have, and should have given up. That's just a very random paperwork example mm -hmm. to this. People would, would maybe be looking at this thinking, you know, either of us are successful in a certain way, but when we look at people and compare, we feel like we're not, and that we could be other ways, but it's only from, you know, the trials and tribulations, I really get to share more stories like that. I like hearing yours. That's what made me think that. Mm. Tell me more about the failures that you've had, Pamela, <laughs> Pamela about the bad website. Oh, I've been online was... for a long time. Well, at the time, I mean, it's very 2017 is the best I can say. So at the time, I thought it was mm. so much better than I ever had. So I was just very grateful. But it's very outdated as per like the sleek modern look with the proper funnels and things that everyone has now and I still have it to this day, you know, and um, I started kind of wondering why, you know, I have so many like, for those of you who understand what I'm saying, uh, because you are business people and you have your own business, you, you market yourself, you know what I'm talking about, I have an incredible open rate. Or at least I think I do, I have like 40% open rate on my um, mailing list. That's amazing, guys. It's usually five to ten these days. But and I and I have a terribly low click through rate because the um, the content is I'm not a great I'm not great with newsletters, the graphics, all that kind of stuff. All the Mailchimp is devastatingly hard for me. So I'm sitting there doing a lot lately. What's that? <laughs> Mailchimp's changed a lot lately. I can't anyway. focus. I'm just trying to do a basic email uh, format just to just share something with my clients and tell them about my next class and mostly just share something that I've come up with and that I want to share. And um, I can't even, I can do the text, but when I try to put a graphic above, it's ridiculous. Try to put in lines, it's ridiculous. And then what's, it's different on your phone versus what's on your, so you have to make different formats on your phone and on um, when they open it on the tablet versus the computer, it's three different formats. Um, it's ridiculously hard. So I can't get anyone to click because when they look at their phone, they're like, whoa, that's all over the place. The lines over here and the graphics over there. And 
Um, but when you open it from a computer, which is where I do them, it looks fine. You know, it looks great. So it's, it's crazy. And then, so I had this like 6% click through rate. And then, um, strangely enough, all 6% are actually buying, which is really, really good out of like, you know, thousands of people. Right. But so this is just great hearing that you have trouble with MailChimp. Oh, I definitely do. I definitely do. And, and I do my own all every marketing that you see is by me. Every last piece of it. I have, to, I do my own. I don't hire out. I don't delegate, which is kind of ridiculous, you know? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking as well. I know someone <laughs> I can give you that can help you with the mountain. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I, I think I might have to delegate, which is another capacity to be able to receive help and to be more mm. like feminine in the process is to be able to, you know, delegate a good bit more. It is, isn't it? And it's hard to know what to give out and where to receive help. I think having your own business thats and trying to gain more time, that's definitely one of the things that, I mean, not just the people that I speak to need help with, but me myself, like in, to go to the next level of anything and allowing myself to create the space for me to be creative, which might mean do nothing walk the dog, have a coffee with a friend or whatever else, while somebody else that I'm paying does the other thing, which is the reverse of masculine, I'll do it for myself. I think, I don't know, because my partner, that's his chair over there. It's weird sharing an office with a guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, I don't make videos while he's here, but also he will do everything himself, mm -hmm. everything, which is amazing. And I guess women, we do that as well, but... Over the years, I've learned, okay, now I can outsource the cooking, I can outsource the cleaning, I could outsource lots of different things, which gives you time and space, even if it's time and space to be creative. It is, that is one of the power turning points I find, I found for me, is outsourcing something. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be emails, it could be graphics, it could be help at home, any of it, way before you're ready. Because you can earn more per hour probably than one of those smaller tasks. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's the hours that are taken from you when you're doing that is kind of it adds up, especially when you don't know what you're doing like me. <laughs> um, Frustrating. Mailship is email, honestly. Just use Gmail, guys, if you're wondering what, what we're talking about. <laughs> and everything from Gmail as blind carbon copy so everybody doesn't get the email addresses. <sighs> You don't need an email server unless you've got, you know, hundreds or thousands of people you're serving to, emailing to. Yeah, and I do, but um, so that's why I started using MailChimp, but it just gets ridiculous. So I started um, thinking about other programs and then I went, oh my gosh, I really don't want to do this. So a part of honoring the divine feminine was me saying, I really don't like doing these newsletters. <laughs> um, and when I admitted that, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to do a newsletter, I'm going to do it exactly the way that I want to do it, if I'm going to do it at all. And then number two, I kind of still don't want to do it. So that means I'm going to have to look for someone to do it. Um, so it's interesting when it comes to um, women's empowerment in business. Um, it's, it's easier when you have your own business because I can say, you know what, I'm just not going to do that newsletter because I'm the boss, you know, and that's that. But what about people who aren't, you know, when, when we talk about women's empowering business and the boss is like, yeah, yeah, uh, actually you're doing the newsletter and you're doing it this way. <laughs> um, what then? I, I did, I've never thought about that from that perspective. Actually, good question. I think choosing to do it as well, like not necessarily saying, okay, boss, I'll do that. I mean, choosing within yourself to do the thing or to not do the thing. So if you have to do it, then you have to choose to do it because then you give up the resistance. You mentioned something before, which was around deciding and choosing, like whether you were going with the email server or whether you weren't. This has been a theme the last week or two with my clients of choosing or not, or actually even deciding to give up. How do you, how do you make decisions? Obviously, I don't know, but I'm presuming you, who do you call on? Well, um, you channel people or do you do it yourself? I do it myself because I'm here to be human. I mean, th those beings that I channel do not have bodies. Um, so I'm sorry, you don't get to make my choices for me. Because <laughs> you're not in this body. You don't know how hard it is. Every body's different. Every psyche is different. So unless you're in my body and there are only a few components of spirit guidance that are in there, and they're all me. So there it is. <laughs> um, you don't, unless you're my higher self, 
you do not get to make those choices for me, guides. So as um, a channel and a medium, I don't let them. I am responsible for that. It's my lesson. It's my choice. So when I get that way, though, um, I don't think about, well, is this better or is that better? The one way that I delegate in that way is that I hand it to someone who has that type of mind. You know, and much like you, um, you know, when you hand things like that to your partner, I hand a lot of things like that to my partner. She has that kind of mind, you know, that to be able to handle certain things. You know, my inbox, you know, I don't, I don't know that the other um, women in business have this problem. My inbox is a problem, okay? Is your inbox a problem? I wouldn't know. I don't really look at it. <laughs> So I, okay. guess <laughs> I respect that. I wish yeah. that I would. I don't finish deleting emails. That's everyone who's worked with me with admin looks at it and goes, oh, having a heart attack. I Why know. aren't you clearing your emails? I'm like, oh, if it's important. If the leg's fallen off, they'll email three times. <laughs> I love that. I, um, I just hand it off because I, um, and some people in spiritual industries are like, no, 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 the teacher needs to answer every single email. I read every single email, but I do not answer every single email. I might answer like 5% of every single email, if that. You can ask Anya if that's true, because she's probably here right now in the chat somewhere. But that's what I think. And that's how much I think that I answer. And, and the reason being is because people don't exactly know how to properly enter another person's space with emails. Boundaries. You've decided there's a boundary there. Mm -hmm. So I get these emails and it's like, um, so I'm reaching out after our session because I had a question. I'm like, oh, great. You have a question. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm ready. I, I got my fingers on the keyboard. And then you're like, so when I was five, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, God, here it goes. That's my head. <laughs> when I was five, this happened. And, you know, I, I entered into this, this really big dynamic of, of this powerful core belief that really changed my life. But it was so hard. And then my mom did this. And then my brother did that. And, and, and then this happened. And then that happened. So I learned this. And then long story short, I'm like, oh, that, that is not going to stop. And then it goes on for another six paragraphs. That, that's my email. That's my email box. And no you don't answer them. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't answer them because I find it very intrusive because I'm looking at that and I'm like, OK, uh, number one, is this person a student? Let me figure out who this is. <laughs> I generally will answer my student. Right. And if I can't, I will have, you know, Anya do it. I'll have that happen. But um, and I'll have her answer in a way that comes directly from me. She'll ask me and I'll say, oh, yeah, 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 I get that. Tell them that. And then she goes back and just writes exactly what I said. This, she's not doing it on her she's just, it's not from her brain it's from mine always but with that exception of like students and clients that talk to me regularly if you come to me and you're like yeah you know what i'm on your facebook book and blah 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 you know i'm like okay i don't actually know you i can sense you when i want to but i don't know you we don't sit together we don't have sessions together so don't overload me uh with your whole life story and several different paragraphs that are painful to read there's so much we're empaths so think about a person's space in spirituality and think about that not just in spirituality but everywhere think about when you are emailing people when you're messaging when you're texting when you're leaving voicemails do people do that anymore i don't know with voicemails mm -hmm. um it's sort of this modern era where when i leave voicemails some of these younger people are like what you voicemail me just text me i'm like i don't do text they're like well i don't do voicemail and i'm like oh, how are we going to connect i'm old <laughs> <laughs> so, so think about a person's space if you want to honor the divine feminine when you're reaching out to them be succinct be honoring of their time let them know who you are get straight to the point thank them it's one of the things that many people who email me don't do and who text me don't do they don't start out with by the way thank you it's only like my students and my long-term clients who do that Mostly everybody else will not, they won't thank my team. It's just, hey, where's this? Hey, I thought you said I could have that recording. <laughs> and, and that's what we hear because we're empaths. We, we're receptive. Our divine feminine is open. So we read that and we think, okay, fucker. I mean, do, do you, <laughs> what, what do you want from me next? So you thought I was well behaved. You didn't know. <laughs> no, this is great. I mean, this is obviously for people that are dealing with thousands and hundreds of thousands of people across their channels. 
but this it starts as well even if you've got 50 clients or 150 clients one of the turning points for me was the reason I don't let my client my clients know to not email me I mean other random contacts come in through there but not to the level that yours do is to communicate through a Facebook group so I would decide when I can go in there and then I know what the container is as well because it's a paid program or etc so me having if I have too many channels of communication I don't know like you said are they a person are they a client you've got a, you've got a lot so a lot of different versions of membership that people can join on pay, is it Patreon Patreon yeah so out of like you know hundreds to thousands of people that we may know not just in business but personally you know because I had the type of email that it puts all of my emails both personal and business and I have a spam email too that I give like say <laughs> to the mall or wherever I am when I buy my kids clothes and they want to put me on a program it's a spam email that they get so <laughs> Um, that all goes into one, you know how Gmail is, it'll show all inboxes and everything's in there. So I'm going, wait a minute, is this personal? Is this somebody that my mom knows? Uh, what, what, you're a YouTuber? <laughs> Tell me who you are. Tell me what you want. Respect the space. It's a sacred space. Don't tell me everything. I don't need it. I already freaking know. You got to trust that. I know exactly why you're emailing me. And generally it's just to get something out of me that isn't an equal exchange. Um, but sometimes it's to say thank you, which is wonderful if it's a student. So I get a lot of that. It's so beautiful. They're so respectful of space. Um, but I just get also a lot of disrespect in the social media space. And um, that's a, a big thing in honoring the divine feminine is honoring that person's space. I want to go in there and stick up for you some more. <laughs> <laughs> if, any, if I see anyone in that group being <laughs> <laughs> I uh, will automatically, it's funny, my partner's often saying, can you just mind your business? Like, no, if it's in front of me, it's my business. <laughs> and I will, I think we talked about this the other day, actually stick up for anybody that's not, you know, I want to make the world a, a better place. Speaking of, since you do that, what well, you're probably going to hate this question. No. <laughs> What's going on with humanity and how are we going to be? Are we going to be all right? I really need you to say we're going to be all right. This morning I didn't feel all right. It was because I went to the well, inbox not. first and I shouldn't have. Usually I know, I actually know that we'll be all right. Yeah. I mean, what, what caused that? Um, was there something that you saw or, or listened yes. to? Yeah, normally it's that. Because normally we're in our space and we get up in the morning. We generally in that space of peace and you're around yourself and you're beautiful doggy and your partner and in your space that's so energetically you know grounded in your home and mm -hmm. and and then if you open up social media and then it's not that and someone's like pushing their energy at you have you seen youtube lately jesus <laughs> i can say that he doesn't mind at all because <laughs> i channel him so Sweet baby Jesus in a manger, if I see one more pushy YouTube about the end of the world or the apocalypse or words that I don't even understand about the deep state, I'm going to lose it. And I'm going to lose it on you. <laughs> there's one thing, and I've shared my truth lately about that. I believe that there's a lot going on in the government. Absolutely, there's a deep state. I mean, anybody would be just kind of out of their mind to, to not believe that we don't have corrupt governments. And you guys are surprised about child sex trafficking really of course that's happening and if you're going to bitch about it do something about it yes and talking on the internet is not doing something about it exactly actually email the member of parliament anything that you see me post i have already sent yes. at least 25 emails i'm exaggerating probably five on the topic or it's really just there to trigger you to learn to think for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Or go all out. If you're going to have a Facebook and a YouTube that's about this topic, make your entire Facebook and your YouTube um, about this topic and then go out and start a nonprofit organization and go for it. But don't armchair critic me about deep state. Because I know intuitives know other intuitives know silence is not consent. Silence is safety. And silence is sacred 
And that's my right to be silent about it and talk about it when I want to talk about it. So I sat back and I listened. Oh, I, I felt that energy. I sat back and I listened and I just went, oh God. Now I heard people criticizing me. Well, Pamela, why aren't you? Why aren't you? Why aren't you talking about the vaccine? Talk about COVID. Talk about this. Talk about that. And I'm like, back up. I'm observing right now. I'm listening to my guidance. I'm watching the universe conspire to heal this. And it is. And we are. And we are going to be okay, but we're more than okay. We always have been. We didn't come here to play safe. That's why the lessons look difficult. So a student and I were talking about this today in terms of COVID, and she asked me a very relevant question that maybe you would like the answer to as well. She said, well, if we create everything, do we create COVID? And if we did, why? <laughs> and she said, you talk about putting out calls. You know, our energies are calls. They're like spells that we cast upon ourselves and others, by the way, whoever believes it. So watch your words, watch your beliefs that come out of your mouth. <laughs> it's so respectful to do that. And basically for years and years and years, what I was hearing for, I'd say, like I said, the 21 and a half years that I've been doing this um, and listening to people and coaching them and guiding them as a spiritual teacher for that whole time I hear, I want some time off. My job is so exhausting. I wish I just had some time to, to go into my own business and to create my own business. Um, I wish this whole business just, this, this business is terrible and my boss is terrible and I wish the whole thing would go under. Um, you wouldn't believe what I hear from people and it's, and it's incredible. And they were like, and then some really beautiful things too. Like, I just want to know myself. I just want to sit with myself and just have some time to remember who I am outside of this job. Right? I, I heard all those kind of things. And when COVID hit, they were like, oh, I don't have a job. Oh my God. My company collapsed. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, what do you mean I have to work from home? You just, you just completely been asking for that for working from home for the past two years and you finally got it and you're mad? Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, of course we created it because we needed a reset. Why do we need a reset? Because COVID is not the sickness. Our culture is. We have a sick culture all around the world. A culture that tells us to believe a certain way, think a certain way. That's why even this conversation about empowered divine masculine has to happen to begin with. Because the sick culture told us that we're not allowed to be empowered if we're feminine. <laughs> so there's that. Or if we don't go to the doctor. Yeah, or if we don't go to the doctor, or if we do or we don't get a certain shot. I uh, don't want to say too much. I don't want to get banned today. Or if we do or we do not uh, wear the MASK. <laughs> Uh, we do or we do not believe in deep state. We vote for a certain um, right wing president or the other side. Well, I'm sorry, guys. I did not vote for either one of them. <laughs> Does that mean something to you? You know, <laughs> can we really judge a person's soul by this much division? Yeah, you guys are really divided over politics over there. Unbelievably so. I mean, Actually, I shouldn't even divide us by saying you're over there and I'm over here. No, you're absolutely obviously. right. That's why the rest of the world hates the U.S. And I wish that the Americans will wake up and realize why. What about Mother Earth? What does she think? So she she's thinks getting cleaner. Ridiculous. <laughs> she's getting cleaner, but she's she's grateful that we conspired for this time off, that we conspired for uh, a resistance to a culture in a different way. I'm very grateful that it's brought all of this stuff to the surface and now everybody can have a conversation about am I responsible for my health? Is somebody else responsible for my health? Like to me, that's just not shocking at all. It's like, oh, I love the light is shining on that conversation. It's normal to have a conversation about that. I've been a weirdo for a long time. Now I'm not. It's just normal. It's just normal to choose what medicines go into your body and how you breathe, <laughs> you know, and, and it's also, can we make it a new norm not to choose how other people, um, if they believe that something's protecting their health? <laughs> um, you guys getting my insinuations here? If you're not, I'll try to be better. But um, if you believe that something's protecting you um, from germs or whatever, it, don't, don't judge others who don't believe that. And if you don't believe that that protects them, then don't judge the people who do and are believing that they're protected by that. 
you know, it's so sad on YouTube, like I have to become like a Pictionary expert to even be able to say certain words. I'm like, do you actually like, you know what the thing, you know, the, 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 the thing? <laughs> you know? I love Pictionary. <laughs> we get to play more games. Yeah. But that's this whole thing. It's all this yeah. is a game. All of this is a game for us to stay in our power and simultaneously understand that everything is about equity. Equality is equanimity. It, it, it really, that is that the whole sharing of energy which starts with yourself doesn't it look after yourself and, and your home if every single person in the united states paid attention to what's in this temple this body and mind and what's under their roof and all the bodies and temples under their own roofs then we wouldn't have to worry about that if we just did that if every single person could do that I have to, I don't, I didn't say how I met you. This is a totally different topic. I, I mean, not once we went live on here, I told Instagram an hour ago. I had a session with Pamela. I hired her a couple of years ago before I moved down here. And she said to me, it's not um, the partner that you're moving down to be near. He doesn't have a problem. He's open, he's beautiful. And you're the one with the problem or the block. I took it as you're the one with the problem with the block. I can't remember what he said, but I, I know you meant, you know, my heart was not open. I was the one that wasn't fully in or whatever it was. And she was very right. It was enlightening. And she also said, don't worry, your child will have better friends down there where you're moving to. So, and because of that conversation, then I was able to pull the trigger and move. Anyway, it was very enlightening, guys. You should definitely have to have a session with Pamela for whatever reason. Um, she's amazing. I wasn't saying that to wrap up. I don't need to wrap up. It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, we have a cool story. And then we would talk every now and then just randomly, the universe would bring us together. So this is one of those occurrences, you know, and um, it's good. It's fun to get to know you better and to, I love how you're helping people. I've been following your work for a long time. And I love what you do in terms of how you help people start their businesses, but not only the ones that are starting it, the ones that want to branch out and, and you know, reach twice as many people, mm -hmm. the ones that want to start from scratch or become absolute multimillionaires, you know, and even the multimillionaires that you work with that want to um, branch out and perhaps work towards billionaire, whatever it is that that people uh, want to do. They can, can I say that B word's never been in my vocabulary or a client of mine's vocabulary? It's funny, I, I asked a client, hey, do you mind if I use this part of your testimonial and your picture on one of my sales pages the other day? And she said, yes, but can you please put in the bottom line there says really the reality is I got back time because they're my clients aren't trying to be billionaires or even millionaires, really. Six figures is enough, multiple six figures is enough. Hell, just being able to take care of yourself and your family also, I think, is enough. People just need time. And women aren't motivated by money either. And that's okay. Just help people and look after yourself as well. And if you are motiva motivated by money, it's okay to be motivated by money as well. Um, as long as um, your passion is in it and it is a true calling from your innermost self, from your desire. There has to be a calling. I, I just cannot stress that enough in the divine feminine empowerment, that if the calling isn't there, the only thing you're doing is just showing up, throwing a bunch of masculine energy at it. That's the action, the doing. And then of course you make money. And then, you know, for the rest of the day, you're like just zoned out, zoned mm -hmm. out. That's what happens to me if I teach a class that you guys want me to teach and I really don't want to. I can teach anything. <laughs> but then like after I've done all the marketing in the class itself and the preparation for the class, by the time it's done, I'm just like, I'm looking like this. I'm like, <sighs> and it'll take me the whole day and night to get out of that. I'm like, yeah, Netflix, okay. Oh, this is when I start like with the ice cream, you know, I have to really watch that. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's my belly. Yeah. L-glutamine is great for that, for mm. reducing inflammation, L-glutamine powder. My All my fitness friends, you know that. Mm, L-glutamine. Um, is that, what, is that an amino acid? Yes. Mm, yeah, a really important one that's great for clarity and brain function as well, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. 
it's it's well known in our industry. I mean, it's supposed to be a muscle recovery agent, but it's really also incredibly high antioxidant and anti-inflammatory as it goes through the GI tract. So, do you feel that most of us even absorb that uh, from food? No, I think we don't absorb most things because we have problems in the gut to start with. Um, I think it's probably another analogy for information that we don't absorb as well of everything that we don't absorb. Um, but yes, because anytime we have any kind of disruptive stress pattern, the stomach is obviously where digestion starts. People don't chew, they don't breathe. If you don't have enough oxygen, you die. So let's start with air. Yeah. And chewing fixes air. Other things. Yes, absolutely. Mm. I could go on and on and on about that. That's for sure. Do we want to open up questions or do we want to close? What do you want to do? Oh, I don't definitely don't mind opening up questions. Hey, guys, have any of you guys got questions over here on Instagram? Uh, here's one on the YouTube that says, uh, what does leaping into divine power look like for humanity? <laughs> You're waiting on me? Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't really, I, I, I would feel so disrespectful in making that decision for you. Let's put it that way. Ascension is different this time. It used to be that there was this whole, and there is a certain way of this still going, this whole amount of numbers game going on, as the Galactic Council says when I channel them, to where so many people decide this, and then that's what's happening. Well, to a certain degree, you know, there's, that still happens. However, there's this nice little thing we have called free will, where you get to decide what leaping into divine power looks like for you individually. And when you do, you can be the example for you or you're thinking is singular um, to realize that there's a lot of other people out there who feel the same way who are inspired by observing your actions of leaping into power and then suddenly all of a sudden people are doing something different in that numbers game that they've never done before you know that they can actually feel like oh wow this is different this different feels good it's not the same type of numbers game where we all are involved in some massive war or depression, you know, the Great Depression, or, you know, when, when we had slavery or when women couldn't vote or any of the, that numbers game. This is a different numbers game where one person says, hey, are any of you who used to do all that crap in the numbers game, are you guys are kind of done with that? <laughs> like, can we do something different here? That numbers game looks different and you can inspire people. It's about connecting. We're all here for connection. So, so power looks like connection right now. Let's see, that's our power. We, we're not here to do it alone. Just make sure you stay 1.5 meters apart. <laughs> that's hard. Like I'm laughing, but I'm not because America just went through that. Like we're mostly in the green now, but you're not. And it feels so hard to even know what connection looks like right now, which is why it's so important that you honor each other's spaces on each other's websites and social media sites and on your devices, honoring each other's connections and being really um, supportive of each, of each other's businesses. Like, oh my goodness, um, when I am on screen with someone twice as many people get to see me number one if you're worried about views for so many people who are right now but also i get to reach twice as many people who may or may not really feel something that's different from what i'm saying that aligns to them and gives them permission to be different it gives them permission to say what they're what i just said that they were thinking but they were afraid to say so this, this spiritual awakening right now looks like that. It looks like connection and you don't need to be able to hug and be close to each other to do that. Although I can't wait until you guys can. <laughs> Some of us do anyway. <laughs> I think, I don't know, I think some of it's, it, changes at, it changes at midnight tonight. I'm in Victoria in Australia where we have bizarre rules. But that's because we were here to do the work. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. We are. We didn't come to play small, did we? 
<laughs> Definitely didn't come here to complain on each other's posts either. So write that letter to Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Do you have any questions from your Instagram? No, I don't think so. Oh, if I did, I've, I'm not great with Instagram. No, I don't think so. Okay. And you've answered everything that I wanted to ask as well. I was writing down questions like a excited mad woman last night. <laughs> and we wouldn't be having this conversation if I didn't randomly make videos to share my perspective because... I, it was maybe a year ago, probably during the pandemic, I must have popped up and Pamela Common on one of mine. I'm like, oh, my goodness, is that the famous person that I actually spoke to multiple years ago? And I messaged her and I'm still like in a bit of fangirl blush. Because you're in the park and you're you're always in the park exercising and you're just, it's COVID and here you are out in the park exercising. I love it. I was walking the dog. I yeah. like being outside. I really like nature and being outside. So I was just walking the dog and making a video. It's really not appropriate. It's always windy. My hair's often, this is like very polished and done at the moment. Doesn't ever look like this. Um, but if I held back in sharing whatever the perspective is and actually you mentioned something early on about, you know, respecting people's space and not just telling them usually initially that's one of the things that I know I used to do it is we we yell online and make people wrong and that's our teaching or perspective and you can definitely do that that maybe you have to go through that as a cycle but sometimes a, a nicer way for content to land is hey do you ever find this this and this name the problems here are some of the things that I found work for xyz and again like I said at the start just pretend that you're talking to an actual client make that piece of content for your client if i hadn't have done that i wouldn't have met pamela actually if i hadn't have decided that i meet nice people i wouldn't have met lee duffy and she wouldn't have referred me to pamela i decided that i've decided that i make nice friends i've decided that i help lots of people it is we've got to remind ourselves who we are this is even critical more now especially if you're persuaded or blown off your perch by social media stop looking at it it's more important you choose who you are and decide who you are and what you do even if what you write down is different every day it doesn't matter it's not going on your tombstone well, I love that. and then also at the end of the day pardon well i love what you just said um that even if it changes every day to be able to give that permission is so powerful because many people that come and they're coached by me into their um, mainly spiritual businesses, but um, they have this theme of, well, I'm a channel, I'm a healer, I'm a sound healer. <laughs> uh, if it's healing, then they then they categorize it further as QHHT or BQH or um, <clears throat> something, some some type of uh, protocol that maybe they, they've created themselves and then they're like, okay, yes, I'm that, this is what I am. All over their page, it's that. And then when you wanna change it, what then you see what i'm saying so is there i guess what i'm trying to ask you is if you were to counsel and work with and coach someone who was starting a spiritual business you know because i know that you you are a spiritual um sorry a business mentor correct mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if you were to work with people starting a spiritual business how would you advise them to start a business when they have certain abilities? And do you do you advise that they put their website being their first and their last name? And when you go about that and you're choosing these mission statements and all these things, when you have an empath, and empaths are primarily um, multiple gifts, like we're a jack of all trades. We'll have like 10 million things that we want to do. So as a business mentor, how would you help that person and, and hone that in a little bit? One, does it need to be honed? So two, actually this week, the theme has been permission. You have permission to be multifaceted, multi-talented, multi-skilled, help people of different genres, niches, ages, demographics, colours, whatever. You can call yourself multiple different things. You are always you. I think that's the most important thing from a branding aspect no matter what, because I look, and this is everybody gets to learn this themselves. 
you will potentially change who you offer things to, how, how you offer things, what you call yourself, et cetera. But your name's not going to change. So I do actually think that that is a good idea to register like yourself, PamelaArilyn.com or something similar um, because then you do the thing and the thing is allowed to change because you're changing and growing. Love and that. you might decide that you want to do something slightly different. Honestly, people buy people. I often refer to, like a client will be um, asking questions, something I said, but it doesn't matter if t- next week you decide to sell pens. You're, you've got the pen. People either want to buy the pen or they don't want to buy the pen because you've got the pen. They might want the pen. So too much thought being put into it really sometimes. Start with your name. You can change it later and do the thing which is the helping of the people because none of that actually matters as much as you think it does anyway because that's coming from old business corporations that are the size of Coca-Cola where branding and marketing, et cetera, matters. And it's, okay, it's masculine, but it's just the way business is, commerce has been done for hundreds of years. You just get to be you. This is the age of the internet. It's so empowering and so amazing, but also so overwhelming because there are so many choices. Restrict the choice. Help your people. Call yourself by your name. It doesn't really matter if you do that by tapping drums, rubbing their back, or reading what their guides say. I don't think. You You have the permission to do it all. (laughs) Just charge Uh some money. Yeah, and do some free do some free stuff as much as you can within the boundary of what feels okay to you. I'm very generous, so I'm always doing free stuff. And the reason I can do that is because looking back now, I figured out, oh, what gave me breathing space were big things like a higher end twelve week online program. This is in the fitness and health space, or a retreat that was expensive, a seven day event that was expensive you know, a one-on-one VIP treatment that was expensive. At the same time, I also ran multiple free programs, always had people on scholarships doing things for free as well, always had a low-end product with groups, always had medium, but it was the high end. So if you are experienced, make sure you have something that's worth a little bit of money as well. You don't have to tell everybody about it. But once you really do claim there, I'm open for business, look what happens and then that gets you your time back. It does. I agree with that as well. And followed by the same principles. And it's funny that you should bring that up because that's what led us to this conversation today. Um, that 4,000 year old paradigm uh, by the sick cultures that still lead our societies today has taught us, and many people still carry it through, that you are not meant to charge for spiritual gifts. So I want to get your take on that. Uh, why does that? St- why do people still believe that? Do you, do you think? I mean, is is are we they're choosing to? Why are they choosing to? Do, why would they want to choose that? Yeah, I think you can definitely give a lot of it away for free. You can give a lot of everything away for free. Why does it have to be just paid or just free? Can it be a bit of everything? Mm-hmm. Um, in Pamela's group, I wrote in one of the comments, "That's okay." Jesus and Buddha were also probably paid in donkeys, so we can just send her some donkeys. They didn't ask for the donkeys, but they would have been paid donkeys. So for instance, in myrrh, and I'll give it to my landlord, and yeah. and and that will because because I legitimately had the question back to um, the people in this spiritual exercise. I'm like, okay, I'm I'm okay that you believe that way, but I do want a logical suggestion. I want some logical advice on if you believe that spiritual teachers and facilitators shouldn't charge money how do you actually expect them to live in a modern world and that's where you and i got to talking in the in the thread there and you were like yeah guys just go ahead you know since since jesus didn't charge just send her some um some stuff over on a donkey and uh (laughs) and i was like yeah i'll take it and i'll give it to my landlord and i'll say energy exchange my love take it and she'll be like get out (laughs) yeah it is actually just the way (laughs) commerce works these days isn't it? It's are you in your human body now or are you channeling something from 4,000 years ago? Slightly old paradigm. It, it's not, none of it's wrong. It's just, well, how does that work for you? Worry about it for yourself <laughs> because it won't work if you practically apply it, which is also what I think happens with random comments on posts. It's really not really that meaningful. It's a random throwaway comment, yeah. which obviously isn't, I don't think is sometimes really that loaded. They don't really mean it. That's how I look at it anyway. That's probably how I don't get offended. I'm like, oh, the poor person. They don't mean it. 
Um, I think it, it pulls me in because I look at that when people put throwaway comments on someone's social media. Um, I'm commenting and I'm putting a lot of time and energy and I'm like spiritual development question. Think deep, go deep, deep with me. And they're like, no, don't charge, give it to me free, throwaway comment. And I'm like, are, are you even working on yourself with me? Are you honoring this space that I just put out towards you and wrote multiple paragraphs about and you're going to give me a throwaway comment, make an equal exchange of energy. If you're going to criticize me, step up to the plate and give me some research and tell me a little bit more about what I need to learn and, you know, let's have an honest, authentic conversation, but don't come and just not put a degree of energy on someone's because my social media is the same as walking in my living room, you know, and you're going to sit down and just be like, nice living room um you you got you got something to give to me uh, for free <laughs> I'm like yeah it, it is an expensive living room are you are, what are you gonna do <laughs> um it, it just would be like making the comment to my face like in my kitchen while we're sitting there making a curry together like to me it's like that so i'm like honor and equal exchange of sacred respectful energy so this is the way of the mystic and empowerment um divine feminine we we merge together and we bounce ideas off of each other and um we may or may not agree like kate and i are very different people you know we sometimes don't agree but we always can honor the space that we're holding like right now you know just honoring this space so where does it come from what's the context because uh, as you said that i thought oh yes that is very much a yogic teacher philosophy mm -hmm. as well that's why lots of them chose to not go online in yeah because they weren't supposed to be making money in some way shape or form but yet ironically they only know that because i pay them for classes um it comes from the old caste system um in countries that have that system and primarily in that system um, which some countries still honor it today, even, you know, it is um, that the um, teacher or guru or yogi uh, or healer or whatever it is, the priest, whatever word, the shaman in some cultures, the, you know, they are supported, the medicine man, they are supported by the tribe. So basically, um, you would come to the temple and you'd pay your tithing and then guess what, that yogi is going to get paid. <laughs> they're getting that somewhere and if they're not, then they're living in the temple. You know, they're, they're, they're definitely being the fed. church in the residence and they're being fed by the food from the church. They're, the utilities are paid for the church. And guess what? There's still a money exchange that you gave to someone which got back to the yogi in some way. So the difference between that system and the modern day system in a capitalist society is that I am not individual psychics, channels, spiritual teachers such as myself, healers um spiritual healing facilitators inner child workers all of that uh shamans um that are more modern we're not supported by that system we have to support ourselves so if you want us to not receive money for healings we have to do a couple of different things number one we would have to get a full-time job which by the way if i did that as a single mom of four kids you would never see me i would not be sitting here with you right now i would not be able to afford it you know, I would not be able to afford anything. You know, the person who's watching my child right now, um, who handled the dinner, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to afford paying that person to do that, right? If I had that full time job, it would be okay. That's that, and now I have no energy exhaustion. I can't afford the energy as well; it's gone. So I might be able to afford some degree of something, but if I um, just did not take the job, I wouldn't be able to afford being here with you right now. And if I did take the job, I would be energetically exhausted. So it's kind of, it's, it's a lose-lose scenario. You know what I mean? For a full-time job um, in a corporate industry. Well, definitely, because you just don't have the time. Yeah. yeah. But the other There's thing no people time. suggest is donation. They're like, well, uh, this we had this conversation not long ago in my spiritual community where someone said, well, um, I know someone who lives completely and does very well by donations. By the, by the way, she, she, <laughs> she has a husband, so I'm sure there's some money coming in that's not via donation. So that's the other thing that we don't know about money coming into the family unit that's, that's occurring that we may or may not be privy to as fans, followers, clients, 
students of that healer or facilitator, right? Take donations. Okay, I've done that. I actually started by donation for two and a half years. I had to move in with my then mother-in-law. <laughs> yeah, she is God. Americans are so stingy. So in the meanwhile, I'm like, I just spent five hours healing you. you not even a penny. Are you serious? Like, take me out for a coffee. Like, I'm exhausted. Come on. Wow. Um, and there was nothing. So I also had to end up getting a full time job so that I could continue to work by donation, which working for donation was what brought me to where I am today. You know, you think you've been through it and you know, and yeah. it but doesn't just come in a straight line that she popped oh, out like this. And I wow, wanted, I've never worked by donation. Yeah, I wanted marriage, I wanted family, I, I wanted, um, and, and that requires some support from me financially, which doesn't mean, oh, and here's the other thing. Well, this is what they say to me when I tell them it didn't work. They're like, well, if you had had the right amount of faith and if you have developed the right amount of faith, then the universe would have always provided for you. You need to work on your faith. Spiritual shaming people, cut it out. I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> oh, well, I can say spiritual shit if you want me to because it definitely is. <laughs> it, it really is. So cut that out. Like we don't want that kind of advice or opinion about what – you think that we're not good enough in God's eyes or the universe's eyes and we don't have enough faith. That's so judgmental. That's when you invoke shame to teach a spiritual, um, to, to provide a spiritual teaching, it, it's so demeaning. Goodness. I think we need to do a, a large conversation of empowered women that have also learned to be like that because then they weren't like that once. Yeah. And do a forum of like a conversation of 10 people that are similar to yourself because yeah it's very powerful i wanted to also bring up i know that there's some people in there that are having you know saying not nice things for example but it's your group and maybe people are scared to put themselves out there because that that's they're watching that that happens to you i think in a message in your own business and someone that's not just looking to start their own thing but have existed in that space of helping people for a while it's important to speak to the people that are already over your side of the fence not the ones that are over the other side of the fence that don't believe that it's worth anything etc obviously other people that are practitioners that believe that aren't going to be your clients necessarily but that there is a division of the people that it's easier to work with which will make your life easier and then the ones that you're trying to drag over the fence or over to your way of thinking and then everybody gets splinters you and them so you don't actually have to save the world or try to help those people when your energy might be better put in the space of the ones that are already in your backyard, of yeah. which there's plenty. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's all these terms in, um, <laughs> in business that, that you hear um, that I, I hear from different marketing coaches. They're like, well, do you want the high hanging fruit or the low hanging fruit? And I'm like, <laughs> When did people become edible? Like, I get so confused. <laughs> like, um, can, can I ask you what that means and how? You want to ask me what it means? Yeah, this, this whole oh. low hanging fruit, high hanging fruit. I mean, is this like men's underwear? Is this fruit of the looms? Like, what is this? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just don't understand. Like a push up bra? Yeah. You want the ones that are very perky. <laughs> you, um, I don't like marketing terms. I have used that fence term for myself for what feels like 20 years. I think I heard it in the fitness industry because we get heavily trained in sales and personality profiling and all that stuff in the fitness industry and sales. Um, but it, because literally I think you get splinters. Yeah. Anyway, um, I, I have heard the term low-hanging fruit. I don't like any of these marketing terms because it turns people into a number and not a person, but it's just an analogy. So, again, I don't have to make it mean anything and neither do you if you're listening to this. But low-hanging fruit just meaning, for example, an apple's going to fall off the tree when the apple's going to fall off the tree when it's almost ripe anyway. So the person's almost ripe. They're, all, they're actually over your way of thinking. It's the right time. It's the right whatever for them to hmm. do the thing with you if they were to become a client if that's what falling to the ground as the piece of fruit means mm -hmm. yeah i think in my industry we would say um when the teach when the student is ready the teacher will come or something similar okay 
yeah, it's just the people that are ready. You know what low-hanging fruit is, meaning there are people. and But everybody who is alive, if they started, and I don't usually work with people that are starting, I work with people that have existed for a while. They might have no social media presence, for example, or they've just never sold a high-end product or they're not earning as much money as they could, but they are in practice of whatever they're doing. Oh, no, I've forgotten what I was saying. Um, the hanging fruit. Fruit. or something you just disappeared off instagram so I'm gonna... oh Doesn't matter. probably because my phone is dying sorry <laughs> all good i should have prepared more okay. for that. my apologies no all good oh, the only reason i'm prepared is because i charged overnight and it's morning here um no learn, oh, everyone has low-hanging fruit in that if you're not, if you're 21, you don't have as much low hanging fruit. If you're 31, 41, 51, you know more people. So more people know you to be that, I don't know, whatever the weirdo thing is that you do, that you do the thing because you be the thing pretty much. Maybe you eat healthy. Maybe you've always been reading tarot cards. It doesn't really matter what it is. And so through your own organic network, there are people that would be ready to, technically to work with you what, with whatever that is. If not your own organic network, knows somebody within two degrees of them who would work with you which is why I'm always saying to people please post what it is that you do on your personal profile not just on your Facebook business page because they don't get seen that's all mm. that's all low-hanging fruit everyone has low-hanging fruit we are all um farmers hmm. an interesting analogy I love it but that's uh, the fruits an analogy isn't it someone just hooked onto that and it's been done to death yeah i guess i think of like grapes or whatever and the way that they are but i also think you don't want to eat them when they're low-hanging fruit they're disgustingly soft <laughs> <laughs> like, i don't want to eat a grape and it's, i don't like grapes anyway oh no my partner eats them they're everywhere that's all i think of is grapes what's that oh it's a grape <laughs> Not you want to be fed the grapes. You want to the high hanging fruit. And then they fall on the ground, and then ants crawl all over them. I just understand it just sometimes. I'm like, oh, it's rotten. Um, <laughs> um, so that is a uh, really, really interesting. And um, empowerment overall is something that's been so misunderstood. Whether we're talking about, you know, the divine masculine power, which we have identified more as like the active, creative. Um, energy and motion when you take a thought and you actually go do it, you know, and create it. Um, and, and you're just really in, into that movement. Um, that's divine masculine, whether it be speech or writing or, or, you know, if you're a playwright, if you're a musician, whatever you do, it's a doing state and divine femininity is more of a powerful receptive state. So give or receive, give or receive. What are you doing? And where's that balance in between? And when you have too much receive you're not being active enough you're not in the give mode if you're receiving 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 and that can be just as overwhelming as being too much in the give mode and not receiving you can be drained in an, in an equal capacity so what would you suggest people do to become aware of what they're doing how they're being and how to balance it the body will tell you that the body is meant to be a measuring device the body will tell you because it will tense up. Uh, literally, you will become tired. You will get headaches. <laughs> um, and when you're eating improperly, you're, you're a fitness coach as well. You understand when you're eating improperly, what happens? You get drained. You get headaches. You get exhausted. You know, you feel it in some way or shape or form. And your adrenals become tired. The gut uh, doesn't begin to work the way it's supposed to. So many things happen when you don't put in things when you don't receive whether that's food or love <laughs> it's it's all the same it's nourishment you know it's no matter what it is whether it's physical or emotional it's all energy so in yoga we call this pratyahara you have to know whether to draw in energy and nourishment and know when you're overwhelmed and you need to draw back so again the body is a measuring device and it'll tell you but more than that, there's something that really directs the body that most people forget about. And Kate, I'm sure you know what that is. It's the breath. <laughs> you mentioned it a while ago. The breath. How important is breathing, you know? Very important. 
Breathing directs your thoughts and your words and your body. If you're not brutal when you're anxious, what do you do? Hold your breath. <laughs> First thing we do, throat tightens up and we hold our breath for a minute. We freeze. Yeah. But that's how we know we're out of balance with too much giving or too much receiving. You're listening, something stops you anyway if you're not listening, doesn't that eventually? Mm -hmm. It does. I saw this funny little meme, I think on Instagram the other day, it was a little kind of like a little hook that was on a, a door or a wall. And um, it said how the universe gets you to slow down when you know you're doing too many things. And it shows someone's shirt on the hook when they were trying to walk by and you know how that happens and things yeah. grab you and you stop. Well, your body just yeah. is trying to grab you and just make you just stop. <laughs> And focus on giving and receiving and what the balance is. Yes, mine has done that the last few years. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, I think we should wrap up because my body is saying so. And um, you probably have other things that you need to do for your day. I wanted to thank you for being on here with me and having me on your Instagram as well. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about what you do and where people can find you. So if you can just give a brief description of how you work with people in your mentorship and where they can find you, that would be lovely. So I'm happy, thank you, Pamela. I'm happy to answer anyone's questions regarding anything, no matter what level of business they're at. Um, my genius is helping predominantly at the moment experienced health, fitness, professional coaches. I tend to pick up some other coaches as well because they've got friends that are fitness people and they refer them to me and helping them to fill the gaps in their income and market authentically as well and create programs and packages that come from the genius. My website has got everything on it. It's katemartinmentor.com, katemartinmentor.com. And how? let's talk about you. How can people work with you? Mm. I'm used to running the interview right. as well. This is weird being interviewed. <laughs> yeah, so many ways. We have so many group programs and individual programs. I'm primarily a spiritual teacher. So I teach what I call the great mystery. It's called Mystery School. And it's been around, Mystery School has been around since the time of the Essenes who wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls, who were prior to most Christian religions thousands and thousands of years ago. So that's what I teach. I teach those sacred alchemy practices that are really all about initiating yourself. I'm not the person who initiates you, I'm just your guide. So it's all about invocations and alchemy and that sacred, sacred work that you do within yourself. In um, the mystery schools, the, the primary belief is that um, the kingdoms of God are within, What you hear that in the Bible, you hear that in the uh, Quran, you hear that uh, all throughout the Torah, um, you hear that in the Kabbalah, which is primarily Aramaic and Hebrew. Um, you hear this, the, the kingdoms of God are within, within, the kingdoms of God are within. Well, what does that mean? And then people came along and they're like, okay, there's seven chakras. And then they're like, okay, there, there's uh, this, there's that, there's seven this, seven that. It's the same thing, except it's a very beginning. Where did, that, where did that all begin? What is a kingdom of God? It's not just a color or how much energy is inside of, you know, a chakra in your body. It's that component of essence. What, what essence of God is within you? You know that grants you your personality strengths and weaknesses in alchemy we call that virtues or vice you know what are your virtues and what are your vices and you find yourself there wow <laughs> that sounds exciting i'm gonna to have to join now yeah exciting it is exciting so i am um a bit of a yogi um, but primarily i practice a lot of different things i teach channeling i teach a bunch of different spiritual development I'm not um, teaching um, shadow work or inner work, inner child work at this point, but I have plenty of people that I can send to you if you want to know who does that. I particularly love Jenna Lemire. She's amazing. And for yoga, I love Rubina Densa. And of course, for health and fitness coaching and nutritional stuff and building your brand, Kate is amazing. And there's just so many of us that um, just know each other and Kind of can vouch for each other so anytime you want to know about kate go over to her website go to her instagram um go to her facebook and look her up she's phenomenal that's 
so humbled and blessed. Thank you so much for even having this conversation today. Look forward to having many more. And yes, everyone can feel free to message me from the website or comment here. But, yeah. You know, we just and same with my people. Let's ask Pamela as many questions as possible. Yeah. So I'm all about finding purpose. Mystery school is about finding your actual purpose, not your goal, not your job, not that's just what you do to support your purpose. So purpose is way deeper than that. It's your passion, it's your inspiration. It's always some emotion. Absolutely always there's emotion that contributes to it, but um, it's even deeper than what we can feel and what we can even put into a human word. It's beyond language, you know? So finding purpose is a big deal so that you understand how to stop asking all these questions like, why am I here? This can't be all there is. <laughs> these are mystery school questions. <laughs> So that's the perfect way to summarize what you're doing there with some thinking, but what do they do? What is the outcome? You know, yeah. what do I put over here on my accounting sheet? Um, <laughs> just those nagging questions that make you really not live your life, you know, successfully and happily and in and, and full abundance and love. When we have these nagging questions about why do I feel this way or why do I feel that way or why does this irritate me and why am I here and what is my purpose? These are just philosophy's been trying to finagle this into their stuff for thousands of years as well. But prior to philosophy, there was a mystery school. And there were adepts that were initiating and helping people find themselves. And ultimately speaking, guiding people to learn how to let their own inner kingdoms initiate them. So it's not about me being anything more special than anyone. That's not what initiations are. This is not about me telling you what your practice needs to be. That's not what mystery school is. But if you really want that, you can have a practice and it can be simple. It can be under 20 minutes. It can be easy. It can be practical and it can be sacred. So that's um, everything else that we do in the school. And it's just, it's incredible. I absolutely love it. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, you can tell you're born to do it. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. Should we close? Are we good? Yes. I have to let the dog out. He's That's like, all I'm conscious of now. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. And I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon, Kate. <laughs> Thank you. Talk to you soon.